Hi all the students. Today we are going to study public switched telephone network. So a public switched telephone network also known as PSTN. So basically uh, before starting with public switched telephone network, let us see what is the importance or why these telephone networks are used. So, uh, when two computers which are owned by the same company or organization and then they are located close to each other, that means they are in a close proximity and when such computers need to communicate, it is easiest to run a cable between them, right? So, this is how LANs work. Whenever you are in the same organization or same company, and you are located close to each other, how do you connect? You connect with the help of LANs. However, when the distances are large or there are many computers or cables that have to pass through a public road, in that case, the cost of running private cables are usually the constraint and it is quite a complicated task also. Consequently, network designers must rely on the existing telecommunication facility for such scenarios. That is, when there are many computers or cables have to pass through a public road and when the distances are large. So, we must rely on the existing telecommunication facilities for such communications. Now, these facilities... Right, these telecommunication facilities, especially the public switched telephone network or the PSTN that we are talking about today. So basically, uh, no, though their suitability for use in computer to computer communication is often very low or marginal at best, but the situation is rapidly changing. Now, why? With the introduction of fiber optics and digital technology. So in the past, transmission throughout the telephone system was analog. But with the actual voice signal being transmitted as an electrical voltage from source to destination. So earlier there was no digitization of the telephone system. All the data was sent as analog signals. But with the advent or with the introduction of fiber optics, the digital technology or the uh, is taking place in terms of uh, the telephone networks or in other words, we can say telephone networks are also being digitized now. But earlier the scenario was different. Earlier, all the transmission uh, that was taking through uh, place through the telephone system was analog and with the actual voice signals were being transmitted as as what these voice signals were transmitted as an electrical voltage from the source to the destination so with the advent of fiber optics as i said the digital electronics and computers right so as the fiber optics came the digital electronics came and then computers came so all the trunks and switches which are important components of any telephone network, all the trunks and switches are now digital. So now what are these trunks and switches? Basically trunks are your communication lines. You can say that they are the communication lines or the links which are basically designed to carry multiple signals simultaneously. That means they can carry multiple signals at the same time to provide network access between two points. So two points can communicate with the help of trunks since they are the communication lines or link which can carry multiple signals simultaneously. Trunks typically connect switching centers in a communication system. So the job of trunks is basically to connect switching systems. Now what are switches? The switches are centralized points or the central points on a network that function as nodes to enable communication between two points. So 
दे आर इनेबलिंग कम्युनिकेशन बिटवीन एनी टू पॉइंट्स ऑन अ नेटवर्क सो वेन अ कॉल इज प्लेस्ड आफ्टर बींग राउटेड थ्रू मल्टीपल स्विचेस वेन एवर अ कॉल इज प्लेस इट इज बेसिकली राउटेड थ्रू मल्टीपल स्विचेस so trunks are the communication lines which are carrying these signals and switches are the centralized nodes or point on a network that enable communication between any two points so digital transmission is obviously preferred more than analog transmission because it is not necessary to accurately reproduce an analog waveform after it has passed through many amplifiers on a long call right if you are able to correctly distinguish a zero from a one in a digital transmission it is fair enough you do not have to do much so this property because of this property it makes digital transmission more reliable than analog transmission further it is cheaper and easier to maintain so that is why because of these three features that is reliability uh, low cost and easier maintenance the digital signals are preferred more over the analog signals so if we summarize all this the telephone system basically consists of three major components now these three major components the first one is your switching offices it is uh, the switching office is the actual place where the calls are moved from one trunk to another then what is the trunk as i told you earlier these are the nowadays these are the digital fiber optics which are connecting the switching offices so trunks do the task of connecting the switching offices and switching offices move your calls from one trunk to another then the third major component or element of a telephone system are your local loops so what are the local loops local loops basically consists of your analog twisted pair which are going into the houses and businesses so these are the wires that are basically connecting your telephone systems to the switching offices now since the local loops provide everyone the access to the whole system they are critical because as a layman we do not have any idea about trunks and switching offices it is we just see the local loops which are connecting our telephone systems the wired telephone systems to the whole system which is making the call possible right so they are very critical to any telephone system the local loops now for the long haul trunks the main issue is how to collect the multiple calls together and then send them out over the same fiber so you have you want to send multiple calls together over the same fiber so this particular subject or this phenomenon is called multiplexing right so when a computer wishes to send digital signals or digital data over an analog dial up line the data must be first converted into analog form right and for transmission over the local loop because the local loop transmits data in the form of analog signals usually so whenever a computer is sending digital data over an analog dial up connection or dial up line the data this data must first be converted to analog form because the data which is sent through the computer is always in digital form and this data must first be converted into analog form so that it can be transmitted over the local loop so this conversion that is from digital to analog is done by a device which is known as your modem right the modem is also known as modulator and demodulator and out of these words modulator and demodulator the short term modem was de derived now at the telephone company's end office the data are then converted to digital form for transmission over the long haul trunks right so basically what is happening 
through the computer when you are sending digital data using the analog dial up connection the data is first converted to analog form so that it can be transmitted over your local loop right modem is doing this conversion and then at the telephone companies and office the data this analog data is then again convert, converted to digital form so that it can be transmitted over the long haul trunks now if the other end is a computer with a modem right so if the other end is also a computer then what will happen the reverse conversion that is now from digital to analog conversion is needed so to traverse the local loop at the destination that means if the destination is also a computer so in order to transmit the data which has been converted into uh into digital form this data then will be converted from again digital to analog so that it can be transmitted through the local loop at the destination so analog signals basically what are analog signals analog signals consist of varying a voltage so in these signals the voltages are varied with time to represent an information stream so analog signals consists of varying a voltage with time to represent an information stream and basically i can say that in analog signals the information stream is represented how by varying the voltage with time so if the transmission media are perfect or were perfect which is not the case the receiver would receive exactly the same signal that the transmitter had sent right but unfortunately media are not perfect so so the received signal is not the same as the transmitted signal right so transmission lines basically in a telephone system suffer from some major problems now what are these major problems the first one is your attenuation what is attenuation attenuation is basically the loss of energy of the signal as the signal travels or propagates outward so this loss is expressed in decibels per kilometer now next is your next major problem in telephone lines other than attenuation is your delay distortion so what is delay distortion when network data signals are transmitted right so basically when the data signals in a network are transmitted via a medium at a certain frequency right and speed and then the signal velocity and frequency vary right so the signals are basically transmitted at a certain frequency and a speed and after being transmitted this velocity of the signal and the frequency start varying this means that all signals do not arrive at the same time and hence it results in distortion of the signal right so this is known as your delay distortion it is basically a guided transmission media phenomenon that is this delay distortion happens only in case of guided or wired transmission media now the third major problem with the telephone systems is your noise noise is basically any unwanted energy from the sources other than the transmitter you want to hear the noise only from the transmitter but when you hear the noise from the sources other than the transmitter that but when you hear these signals i'm sorry uh, the data that you the signals that you receive from the transmitter are your signals but when you hear something uh, some uh, signals or some kind of noise uh, from somewhere other than the transmitter that is that is the source of those signals or that energy is not your transmitter but something else so that means you can say it is unwanted energy from sources which are other than your transmitter right and you are not interested in it so that is noise now thermal noise is caused by random motion of electrons in a wire 
right and when you are using wired media in which is in case of a telephone network so you cannot avoid that random motion of electrons right so thermal noise is always there and it is unavoidable further crosstalk is also a kind of noise that is um, witnessed many times in telephone networks uh, so th those uh, for you can ask those people who had wired telephones and many a times cross talk used to happen that is uh, you could hear some uh, other two parties talking to each other on your telephone connection while you were connected to someone else you were connected to the person who you had dialed and still at the same time you could hear two other parties communicating with each other so this is known as cross talk and this is basically caused by inductive coupling between two wires that are close to each other okay so basically all modems allow traffic in both directions so the modems that i said do the task which do the task of modulation and demodulation that is converting an analog signal to a digital signal and a digital signal back to an analog signal they allow the traffic to move in both directions at the same time how by using different frequencies for different directions right so for the outgoing direction they will use different frequency for the incoming direction they will use different frequency and hence we can say they have a full duplex transmission so now basically the econo economies of scale pay play an important role in the telephone system so like that means at what scale what cost you are incurring so it costs essentially the same amount of money to install and maintain a high bandwidth trunk as a low bandwidth right so that means there is not much of a cost different even if you install a high bandwidth trunk it would be same as that of installing a low bandwidth trunk between any two switching offices so consequently telephone companies have uh, developed elaborate schemes for multiplexing so that you can have larger data uh, combined together sent at the same channel or same line so these multiplexing schemes can be basically divided into two basic categories what are these two basic categories the first one is your time division multiplexing also known as tdm in time division multiplexing the users basically take turns each one periodically getting the entire bandwidth for a little burst of time so the time is divided basically and each user will have his own turn where he will get the time a uh, whole turn of time and in that particular time period he will have the possession of the entire bandwidth for that particular time frame so time is divided and in case of frequency division multiplexing which is your fdm the frequency spectrum is divided into frequency bands so basically one frequency spectrum is divided into several frequency bands and then each user can have an exclusive possession of some band out of the frequency spectrum for as long as he wants so this is all about the uh, public switch telephone networks or pstn